I am completely unsure how I pulled this off, but by some miraculous act, I have been gifted with an early copy of The Only One Left by Riley Sager, which is his new book that is coming out this summer. And I feel like I always try to request his books and I forget about it because they're just so hard to get and I never even think anything of it. And then somehow, miraculously, this one came through. I don't know if it's because I've been working on getting my reviewer ratio up on NetGalley and I'm actually doing a pretty good job. I'm a little proud of myself for that. But whatever happened, if it's the karma I've been putting out there, I don't know. I'm just very, very excited that I actually landed an early copy of this book. I'm going to take you with me. We're going to be vlogging the experience. No spoilers. Don't worry, because I know this is a highly anticipated book for many people. And we will just see what I think of it. I do have a roller coaster relationship with Riley Sager's books. Some of them I have loved, some of them I have hated, and some of them I have thought were just okay. And the trend seems to be the more books I read by Riley Sager, the less I like them. But I feel like recently the books he's been coming out with are very, like there's a lot to say about them. They're very contentious, they are bold, they're risky, and people either love them or hate them. And what keeps happening to me is the Riley Sager book will come out or like everyone will be reading it early or like it immediately comes out and I don't read it the very first thing and I hear all of these opinions about it and people are like oh my god it's crazy it's amazing it's wonderful this twist is so cool and then other people are like this is stupid it's cheesy it's awful it's boring I never saw that coming that twist was so obvious like I just hear all these opinions and it always clouds my judgment no matter what I want to do like no matter how unbiased I try to go in it's impossible when you've already heard a million really strong opinions about the book and so I'm very excited to just go in the completely unbiased opinion. I have heard literally nobody talk about this book. I have not seen anyone read an early copy of it. I have not read a single review of it. I don't even fully remember what this book is about other than it has something to do with kind of like a Lizzie Borden retelling. And so I am going in with about as clean of a slate as you could possibly go in. And I am very excited for that. So we're just going to do it. I'm just going to jump on in. I'm going to read the first couple of chapters. I'll let you know my first impressions. I'll let you know more in the middle how things are going in the end. You know how reading blogs work. It's the same every time. But yeah, there won't be any spoilers because I don't want to spoil anything for anyone. And let's do it. Let's see how the book goes. I am 17% into the story, so I thought this would be a good point for first impressions with what's going on in the book. So first I will set the scene for you with the general synopsis of what this one is about. You have a main character named Kit and she is a 31 year old caregiver who was recently suspended from her job for six months because of some incident that she had that you don't know the full details of right away. By chapter seven, I already know the details of it, but I won't spoil any specifics for you. She had some sort of incident. She was suspended from her job for six months. And so she was moved back in with her parents for a bit. And now she is able to return to work and she is being put on this new assignment where she is going to go be the caregiver for this woman named Lenora Hope who is in like her 70s or 80s. Lenora Hope is this very rich woman who lives at this very nice house at the cliffs which is where like the elite live and she is pretty infamous in the area because she is like a Lizzie Borden type of character. There's a whole little poem about her. At 17 Lenora Hope hung her sister with a rope and like something about killing her dad and killing her mom. So there's this whole story about when she was 17 years old and still living in this same house in her family home. Her father, mother, and sister were all found murdered and she was the only one left and she said that she didn't do it and didn't know who did or why and didn't have any memory of it because she was sleeping through it or something. And so she's very infamous in the area. She has never left this house. She has now suffered multiple strokes and she had polio in her 20s. And so she is very um, like isolated in the house, can't take care of herself much. And so Kit is coming in to be her caregiver. The only thing Lenora Hope can really do is move her left hand and that's how she communicates tapping one for no two for yes like that's all that she really is able to express with the world and so kit is coming in to care for lenora and of course she's like a little nervous about it because this woman has this infamous past but 
she starts communicating with her a little bit because Lenora can type on a typewriter and Lenora starts to tell her her life story. That is the setup for the book. That is where we are at so far. And I will say I am intrigued so far. I'm not like incredibly hooked 17% of the way in. I'm not like dying to keep reading. Like it wasn't hard for me to stop and set the book down to give you an update. And sometimes books can be like that where I'm just like so into it that I don't even wanna stop to give an update. And it's definitely not that so far but it's not repelling me <laughs> yet. So that is good. I'm just going in and like, I like it. I'm interested. I'm curious to see where the story goes. I will say similar to some of other Riley Sager's books and how I felt about some of them, it does feel very familiar. You know, like it's calling on a lot of things that just feel really familiar and it doesn't really feel super unique or new. And so I'm hoping that it goes in a direction to give me something new, but it's reminding me of things like the book of cold case by Simone St. James, uh, the show The Haunting of Bly Manor, uh, pretty much any other of Riley Sager's books where he has this female main character and you just throw in two random hot guys into the mix as well as they're going to this mysterious circumstance. Like, why have we already gotten two hot guys? I'm only 17% of the way through. It's because it's Riley Sager and that's what he does. Like, that's the formula that he works with. So I guess that's why I'm not incredibly hooked yet because I'm just like, okay, yeah, I know. I see where this is going. Like, I've, I've felt this before. I see the setup. Like, it's reminding me of all these other circumstances and situations, but it's not doing anything bad so far. Like the writing is kind of cheesy in some ways, but it's easy breezy, you know? And I, I like a good easy breezy read sometimes. It's perfect for the summer too. I always love having a new Riley Sager book in the summers because I just feel like his books work so well for summer. It's like the perfect time for them to come out. So everything's fine right now, easy breezy. Generally okay first impression of the book. Nothing blowing me away yet. Nothing incredibly hooking me yet and nothing making me incredibly annoyed yet. So I'm about right in the middle. And yeah, I'm excited to see where the story goes. Hopefully it brings something new, something unique, something exciting. And I will check in with you once I have read a little bit more. I am 40% of the way through the story now and I have started taking notes because there's a lot of characters. So far I have notes on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 different characters. I was not expecting to have a cast that large and it's a lot to keep up with. So I have notes on characters and what's happening and also some early predictions that I have of what I think is going to be revealed in the story. First I'll say I am enjoying it more now. I feel like I'm sucked into the story more and and it's reading faster and it's harder to put down now because the story's starting to really get going. There's these 13 characters plus probably more that I didn't even take notes of. So it takes some time to get into it and then you understand the flow of the story and things start going. I don't remember if I said this in my initial update. I don't think I did, but what this main character Kit is doing as she's taking care of Lenora is um, also communicating with her through a typewriter. So Lenora only has function of her left hand and so she will use that to type on the typewriter and she is telling her story through the typewriter which you are reading in the book and you read that interspersed with the narrative so you're like it's not a flashback I mean it's kind of like a flashback because she's talking in the past but it's just like reading what she's writing actively in that present moment and so I like how it keeps the whole narrative really close together instead of like sending you back to the 20s or 30s or whatever it is and then you know having a whole lot going on also now that I've read more of the book I can also say it also reminds me of Verity by Colleen Hoover quite a bit because it's a similar situation where there's a person in the house who has this mysterious past who is incapacitated in some way because Lenora can't really like get up by herself like that's why she needs the caregiver like she's pretty much stuck in her spot unless she has someone taking care of her but Kit is feeling like because of some circumstances she's like is someone walking in the house at night when I'm sleeping and is it Lenora and so it has this kind of like can we really trust the situation that's going on with Lenora? I don't know. Can we really trust her past and her version of telling the past? I don't know. And also like telling it through like memoir style writing is how I'm seeing a lot of similarities to Verity. So overall I'm enjoying it more at this point. So far there's only been one reveal. Well, actually there's been like two things. The thing with Riley Sager's books is he keeps things happening. Like he'll keep giving you little reveals or little moments where you're like, oh, 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 and I like that because it keeps you reading the story. So, so far there's been like two things and 
neither of them I saw coming. They're not big things. They're just like small little reveals, but I didn't see either of those coming. But with my prediction of what I think is going on in the story, I feel like I've already figured out like a major plot twist. And I wrote down my prediction when I was 22% of the way through the book. I'm not gonna tell you what it was because I'm not gonna spoil the book for you, but I'm curious to see if that's what ends up being the big twist or if there's going to be more things to surprise me. But so far I've gotten some small surprises and I just think I'm onto something. I don't fully know yet. So that's how it's going at this point. Still having a good time, having an even better time than I was having in the beginning and hopefully it keeps getting better from here. All right, hello. I am 71% of the way through the story. So this is the final update you're going to be getting from me before the final update when I finish the book. So this is the penultimate update. I'm having a good time. I'm still having a good time. We're 71% of the way through and I'm still having a good time and I'm hopeful that this is gonna be a win. I feel like it's going to be a win. I feel like Riley Sager may be back on my good side. I think he's done something here, but I'm also still, you know, we got 30% of the book left. Things could take a turn. So I don't wanna, you know, jinx myself, but I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I feel like this book is for the home before dark girlies. It's for the home before dark girlies, for the lock every door girlies. This is for you. This is gothic. This is spooky. This is Riley Sager at his best. I just love when he has a creepy house and a creepy history and spooky things and mysteries to uncover. This is what I like. So I'm having a very good time. I will say this is probably not for the people who like love Survive the Night, which I did not, that was a one star for me because that book was more of a thriller. This one is more of a mystery. A lot of what's going on in the story is just uncovering secrets from the past and trying to understand the past versus things actively changing the situation in the present. Not to say that things aren't being changed at all in the present, but like, that's not the main focus. The main focus is trying to figure out what in the world happened in the past with Lenora Hope and why her family ended up murdered and did she do it or did she not? And if she did not, then who did and why? And just piecing together all these different characters. There's so many different things that you can see are connected, but you don't have the full picture to understand why. You keep learning like, oh, this person was doing this thing and this person was connected to this person and that's how this person comes into play and that's actually why they're here. And it's just putting together the big, map of events of what happened in the past to get to where you are today instead of like things actively happening a lot today. Things are still happening today. There's particularly a thing going on with the house that I didn't expect to be happening. That's really weird and I like it. That might give you expectations of something like crazy going on. It's not like weird, like too weird, but it's just something that adds an interesting like element to the gothicness of the house and it creates this atmosphere of things just being a little unsettling that I really like. I feel like it was a unique little thing to put in there. And yeah, I'm still having a good time and I'm happy that I'm having a good time. This is exciting. I feel good about this. As for my prediction that I made 22% of the way through the story, I do still think that's going to be a reveal. I don't know yet if it is or not, but all the things that are happening, I'm like, I feel like that's what we're getting at. But there's so many other things going on too that I'm like, there's gotta be more than just that. I feel like Riley Sager's gonna do what he does where there's like three twists at the end, back to back, of, whoosh, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening. And I will say too, I mentioned in the beginning that from the bat, it felt very much his formula of like, you're following this woman who's got these two hot guys around her. So of course one of them's gonna be bad. That really fell away from the story. Those two guys don't play a very significant role. In the beginning, there's like a guy she was hooking up with and he kind of goes away and falls in the background of the story. And then when she first arrives at this place, there's a guy who's hot, who she interacts with a lot, but they're not like flirting and it's not a big thing. So I'm glad that did not take up a big portion of the story. There's just so many other things going on. So many other people whose histories you're trying to place together that there's enough keeping me entertained and those did not become big parts of the story. So yeah, so far, I really don't have many complaints. I would just say the beginning was the worst part for me. <laughs> the beginning was where I was the most hesitant and as the book has gone on, I've been feeling good. I've been enjoying it. I have predictions. I have things that I'm thinking that I think might be going on, but I feel like I'm still going to end up with some more surprises and I've gotten surprises along the way. I've still gotten more surprises. So I was doing all the things I need to do. I'm having a great time. I'm now going to finish the book. And fingers crossed, it keeps up the good energy. finished the book and wowza, wowza. Um, exactly what I thought was going to happen happened. 
and that the very ending was just not good. <laughs> I made note too, I looked at when I started being like, what is going on? And that was at the 90% mark. And the last 10% of this book, in my opinion, is what I would call like a one or two star. <laughs> but the rest of the book leading up to that 90%, I was feeling like a four star about this book. So the ending didn't totally work for me, but I did still enjoy the book as a whole. The last 10% is just whiplash, confusion, nonsensical behaviors, red herrings, drama, crazy outcomes, plot twist, plot twist, plot twist, reveal, 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 plot twist. What's happening? That's how you're ending it? Oh wait, there's more. That's how you're ending it? Interesting. <laughs> so the last 10% just took me on a journey. And I was trying to not be critical. I was like, you know what, just enjoy it. It's ridiculous. You like ridiculous books. You like ridiculous thrillers. Just let it take you on a ride. But I think because it was such like a slow burn mystery for a lot of the book, that the end just really starts to throw so much at you that it felt very, very jarring. So I still enjoyed the book. That didn't ruin the book for me. I was just letting it be kind of like a silly, goofy time at the end. And if I had to put a rating on the book, I'd probably call it like a 3.5 or a four star like I had a good time with it it was a very enjoyable read it was a fast read I love the atmosphere of it it's great if you love gothic stories it's great if you love mysteries it's great if you like books like Verity but I was gonna say slightly less ridiculous version but honestly this is pretty equally as ridiculous but a less romantic-y version like that's really steamy there's not steam in this so if you want a more like mainstream mystery thriller without the romantic stuff that has all the creepy vibes of Verity that's how I'd recommend this if you enjoyed Home Before Dark or Lock Every Door by Riley Sager or even like The House Across the Lake I would bucket this alongside those recommendations and just if you don't mind a bit of absurdity at the end of your books then I think you're gonna have a good time with it. I could sit here for 30 minutes and pick apart every single thing about the last 10% of that book and how ridiculous it was, but that's not a good use of my time. And it's an early release, like the book's not even out, so I'm not gonna spoil things. And it really didn't ruin the book for me. Like it really didn't. I am not that upset about it. I just thought it was so silly. And I was taking notes on it as I was reading it because I'm sure if it isn't already, like I'm sure this is probably gonna be someone's book club pick and I'm going to wanna watch the book club discussions that come out and I I was like, I know I'm going to forget everything about the last 10% because there's so much happening. And so I was taking all these notes and then I'd be like, WTF, like that is how it's ending. That doesn't even make sense. And then I'd be like, oh wait, there's another chapter. And then I'd be like, wait, but that's what they're doing. That also doesn't really make any sense. I do not understand several characters motives at the very end of this book. Like two, three characters in particular. I'm like, why did you do what you did at the end? That doesn't make sense. And I feel like if you get around to reading the book, you're going to totally know exactly what I'm talking about too, because it's just like some absurd decisions being made. I really don't want to talk about it too detailed because I do not want to spoil anything for you. But yeah, overall, I had a good time with it. I'd recommend it. It was fun. Don't take it too seriously. And I hope you'll have a good time with it too if you decide to pick it up. But yeah, that's it. I'm glad this went better than my more recent experiences with Riley Sager went because the last two books he's come out with, I haven't really enjoyed that much. And this one, I at least enjoyed. I guess honestly, like his last two books, I don't hate the experience of them. I just, they just don't feel that good to me. <laughs> but the experience you get is fun and silly. So maybe I'm just starting to recontextualize how I go into Sager's books and that's helping. I don't know. But either way, I had a good time. I'm happy. Hope you're happy. Let me know down in the comments below if you plan on reading this book. And yeah, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.